what I'd like to do is kind of uh, take a step back uh, and look at so senescent cells in general. So why do cells become senescent? Is it always stress or could there be, I mean, is it also part of the natural process? They just get old? Um, not quite, but it is part of the natural process. So for example, it's now known that in the embryo, human embryos and mouse embryos, there are waves of senescent cells that secrete molecules that help the embryo develop properly. So that's one way that evolution has selected for these cells. The other way is that we know that when there is damage to tissues, very frequently senescent cells appear at the site of the damage. And those senescent cells also secrete molecules that help that tissue repair. So this is the evolutionary pressure. You want senescence to prevent cancer, to optimize embryogenesis, and also to promote tissue repair. When there are too many of these cells or they're persistent, that's when they become damaging. So the idea I think in the field is that evolution selected for the presence of senescent cells to be transient, and with age, they become persistent. And we're trying to understand why, but we don't completely understand that, but they do become persistent. And that's when they're damaging. So they really are a double-edged sword. And this is how the field is now trying to move in the area of senolytics to make it so that you apply these drugs for short periods of time. This is called intermittent dosing. So as you know, if you have high blood pressure, you have high cholesterol, um, you take drugs that you pretty much have to take every day. And that's fine that those, those drugs work, but you would not want to take a senolytic every day. What if hmm. you could, what if you're in a car accident? So the idea would be to allow senescent cells to accumulate slowly with age, kill them with a senolytic for just a few days exposure, and then stop the drug. So you don't run the risk of losing the benefits of senescent cells, and then you wait until they slowly accumulate again. And so this is how I think most of us are thinking, is that we need to understand how senescent cells develop, why they develop, where they develop, and then develop drugs that can selectively get rid of them, but after only short periods of time of administration of the drug. There's no such thing as a perfectly safe drug, right? Mm. There's no such thing as a perfectly safe anything. You know, if you drink enough water, you'll kill yourself. So the idea is to limit um, this uh, exposure to these new drugs that are being developed. It's very exciting, but there's so much we don't understand that needs to be done that we still need to understand. Right. So... You, you did, uh, so we're going to do this, uh, the, the senolytics on, on a, a schedule. So how long does it take for a senescent cells to form? I mean, how often would, for a human, do you think you would want to take them? Yeah, it's not clear in humans at all. Um, we know a little bit in mice. Um, so for example, if you clear senescent cells, either with a drug or we can do it genetically now in a mouse, um, it takes weeks. And if you think about the difference between a human lifespan and a mouse lifespan, you multiply by roughly 30 or 35. So mm. you know, we're talking maybe once a year, once every two years, nobody knows. Nobody really knows. But we're not talking about taking them once a week or even once a month. It's probably been much longer than that. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Because I mean, I know the Mayo Clinic is doing some trials right now of Senlix, and they're doing every two weeks or every month, I think. Well, they are um, based on the mouse data. Mm. Um, I would argue um, that that's not necessarily the best way to go, but you have to also understand drug companies. Mm. Um, let's say you own a drug company and 
a brilliant scientist in your company discovers a new senolytic, um, pretty non-toxic, works pretty well. You want to test it in humans. So you start with something like, well, as, as this company Unity did, um, osteoarthritis, or you know something else like macular degeneration, or even neurodegeneration. So you give the drug to a patient. Mm. Now you have to wait to see if that drug is successful. You probably have to wait years because these are slow developing pathologies. And so there's a tension between what we know about the basic biology of senescent cells and what drug companies really need in order to turn a profit. Right. Okay. Anyway, yes, no, that, that makes sense. So I did have, so senescent cells are anti-cancer, but so I just wanted to kind of be clear about this or, or to, to understand it. So a particular cell, you know, it, it becomes damaged and then maybe it could become cancerous or it could become senescent. And in the end, we would prefer senescence, which is definitely better than cancer. But having senescent cells doesn't suppress other cancer. It's just the particular cell itself. Correct. 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 Oh, okay. So, so then afterwards, once it's become senescent, like removing it would be no problem. Well, removing it would not be a problem for cancer. Well, not really cancer, yeah. But remember, these senescent cells are now secreting molecules that can drive other degenerative diseases. Mm. Of it. And that's why you want to remove them. Now, right. the other thing I should point out is that um, there is now a rising awareness of the cost of treating cancer. So there are cancer research has always been ahead of aging research, still is in many ways. There are many drugs now that are used to fight cancer in both children and adults, and many of them cause damage to cells. And the idea is you damage that cancer cell enough so that it dies. That that's the hope. Mm -hmm. And many of them work. I mean, there are drugs that have saved the lives of children with things like leukemia and lymphoma. And it really kills their cancer. And they now are living 20 years longer where they would die from mm. the cancer. I'm not saying these drugs are useless. They're, they're really useful, but there is a cost. Because these drugs tend to damage cells, they also tend to damage normal cells. And that means that the burden of senescent cells is higher in patients that are treated with these drugs. And in the case of children, it's now recognized as a clinical problem that these children who are living longer, but they're living worse. They look clinically older than they are because of these other age-related diseases. And so the idea, my impassioned plea to any oncologist I talk to is that there should be thought to administering these drugs. We definitely want to kill the cancer cells, but then maybe shortly thereafter administering a senolytic to get rid of those senescent cells that the drugs are causing because the drugs cause the kind of damage that drives cells into senescence. And that's the hope. And there are definitely um, clinicians as well as companies that are thinking about that approach. Right.